What drew Westerners to Eastern spirituality in the late 60s it wasn't devotion to Lord Shiva or Ganesh. It was devotion to four working-class lads from Liverpool. It was all less Ganga and more goo 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 -joo. This was once the Mahesh Maharishi Yogi Ashram, where the Beatles came in search of divine inspiration. Namaste! Yes. Namaste! Hello, I'm C. Nice to meet you. Yeah. My guide is Raju, local journalist and fellow Beetle nut. This is the place where the Beatles came in 1968, and this is the place where they learned about meditation. The Fab Four first crossed paths with Maharishi in London. He was already a guru to stars like the Beach Boys and promised bliss and enlightenment through transcendental meditation. So how many songs did they, did they write here in this 48 songs. 48 songs. Yeah. It's a I mean, hit machine, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all originated from here. Ah, oh, it's great. Mm. So there they are. There they are. There's the, the Fab Beatles, Four. Yeah. What I love about this place is that there's the sort of layers of devotion. So some people come here to venerate Shiva, Ganga, then there are people who come to venerate the greatest pop icons of all yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. There's a real sense of sort of guru, you know, kind of guru eyes bearing yeah, down yeah. on you. For a brief time in the late 60s, this must have been the coolest place on the planet. As well as the Beatles, Mike Love from the Beach Boys was here. Donovan and Mia Farrow too. Imagine. Ringo left after just 10 days in search of proper food. What he did, he came here with baked beans, OK? He brought his own baked yeah, beans yeah, all big and all. And all of the Beatles uh, member who came here, uh, they were very annoyed with monkeys and mosquitoes. I don't know much about Ringo, but I do know that he can't abide a monkey taking his baked beans. The rest of the band followed soon after, and finally the yogi himself, amid claims of sexual impropriety. But the Beatles and the Maharishi turned the West on to Indian spirituality and put Rishikesh firmly on the world map. There's an incredible energy and presence about this place, which is as much to do with the wonderful natural environment as anything else. You can hear the Ganges, you can smell the flowers, there's butterflies everywhere. But there's also a sense of it being a, you know, a spiritual home to many. Although running alongside that, you dig get a, a sort of sense of the beginnings of the branding of Hinduism. The, the Maharishi came to London, he sought out the Beatles, he made that connection and brought them back to Rishikesh. Why? Because he wanted celebrity endorsement. Maybe that's what all major religions need. Fifty years after the Beatles passed through, Rishikesh is the place for people in search of... something. There are dozens of ashrams now. They're a sort of health spa for the soul, places where you can meditate, receive spiritual guidance, and detox from the modern world. Oh, you are the cutest little sausage ever. More and more Westerners are being drawn to these quiet places and Eastern religions. So I've booked a short stay at one of the ashrams to try and understand why. Every night, down by the river, hundreds of people gather for Ganga Aarti to give thanks and worship to the goddess Ganga. These are great seats. How many of these do you see a week? I come every night. And always different? Every night is different. And always moving? Like, like a theatre show. Every night is a, it's a new show. And when you hear Pooja Swamiji singing... Really? You can't get enough. You can't get enough of that. Swami Ji is the guru at the ashram. I'm told that he will sing 108 verses. Could be a long night. But, on the plus side, I've been promised a buffet at the end of it. Let's get a bit of that dull going on. This is Elise, originally from the UK and now a full-time administrator at the ashram. She's invited me for supper. What's your story? How come you came here? What drew you to this place? So I have my full-time job. Um, what was your full-time job? 
It was very corporate. I worked uh, for... You were in co you were the corporate world? I was in the corporate I world. Can you imagine this now? Asset management and venture capital. You were in asset management? Yes. <laughs> you know, I was dealing with a lot of staff. I felt I had the capacity to be more caring, but not necessarily in a, in a different environment. But it means asset grabbing, getting, getting. This is, this is what I struggled with. And now you're with. giving, giving, giving. This is where I struggled, you know. I turned around to my colleagues and I'd say to them, you know, we're sort of making rich people richer. So when you come here, although obviously there's the Hindu practices, it's about bringing everyone together. And the, and the answer to everything does tend to be like love and, you know, looking inwards at yourself. When... Will you ever go back, do you think? Depends if my mum's watching this. <laughs> <laughs> so if your mum wasn't watching this, you're not coming back, is that right? I don't know. I'll, I'll visit home. I'll visit home. Um... <laughs> Has she come to visit you? No, I'd love, I'd love my parents to come and visit one day. Do they get it yet or not? Are they a bit bamboozled by you? At first, they were worried, you know, what am I doing? And like you say, what am I giving up? It's not like I'm bumming around and I've got my backpack and I've got, you know, I'm here tr trying to make a difference and I'm a small cog in a big wheel but I'm playing some part and let me tell you you're you in comparison to asset management you are a <laughs> massive cog <laughs> congratulations on being now a massive cog putting the likes of me to shame <laughs>